Hello, this is the third video in the X-ray series on the medical physics option of the A-level syllabus. This video talks about the attenuation and absorption of X-rays once they penetrate tissue in the body. And that's what we're going to talk about, so let's get going. Okay, it's worth just spending a little minute talking about this word attenuation and what it means. Attenuation is effectively, in general, it's the opposite of amplification, so it's a decrease in um, amplitude or a de decrease in intensity. Okay, so we can see here that it says the attenuation is the gradual decrease in energy as the, the x-rays enter and pass through any absorbing material. And obviously the absorbing material that we're interested in is tissue. So the actual quantity that, we, that we're interested in when we're talking about attenuation is what we call the intensity the intensity of the x-rays. Now if you remember from your unit 2 studies, your G482, you'll remember that the intensity is defined as the power per unit cross-sectional area. All right, or here I is equal to P, which is the power, divided by unit cross-sectional area A. Okay, now obviously power is measured in watts, and area is measured in meters squared, so we've effectively got watts per meter squared and the SI unit of intensity is indeed watts per meter squared. All right, so this is the quantity we're interested in. And if you're not familiar with intensity, you need to go back and have a look at G482 or have a look at your textbook and see if you can work out um, or remember what's going on with intensity. All right, but it's just the power, uh, the amount of energy arriving per second per unit cross-sectional area. Okay, so as the X-rays do penetrate the body, how does the intensity change? All right, we'll come back to that one. All right, well, it's an exponential decay, effectively. All right, so the intensity of the X-rays, the power per square meter of X-rays, will decrease exponentially as it enters and passes through tissue. All right, uh, and as it's exponential, the 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 intensity at any given thickness x, which is this i here, is equal to the initial intensity, i.e. the intensity arriving at the surface, arriving at surface of tissue. All right, multiplied by this exponential decay factor. All right, so we get e to the power minus, and the minus denotes that it's exponential decay. And then this quantity mu. All right, now mu is the absorption coefficient, which we'll talk about in a minute. And x is the thickness of the material, i.e. how much depth it's penetrated. So if that's the surface of your tissue, for example, and the x-rays are incident in this direction, this distance here, the thickness or the depth of the tissue, is called x okay and that's this one in in this exponential decay equation here all right so the intensity at any given depth is equal to the initial intensity arriving at the surface of the tissue multiplied by this factor here um, now we need to talk in a little bit more depth about the absorption coefficient all right so the absorption coefficient effectively is how well or how poorly a certain type of tissue absorbs x-rays all right so and you, it's best explained i think from this little graph here so this is the distance that the x-rays are traveling into the tissue i.e how far they've penetrated and this is the intensity of the x-rays at that depth okay so as you can see air doesn't really absorb x-rays at all but as soon as it enters the body uh, in soft tissue such as flesh the intensity will decrease in this fashion all right whereas in bone um, the intensity of the x-rays will decrease much quicker with distance. All right? And that's what we want, really, because we want to see a difference between soft tissues and bone. All right? So we need, at any given distance x, we need a difference in the intensity. And obviously that, that will show up as different shades on, on the x-ray photograph. All right? So bone is a better absorb absorber of x-rays. The decay is much quicker and therefore it has a higher absorption coefficient, all right? So something with a higher absorption coefficient, mu, means it's a better absorber of x-rays. It's not quite as simple as that because it also depends 
on the energy of the incident X-ray photons. Right, and we'll have a look at how that works in a minute. Now, the unit of the, the attenuation coefficient is per meter. All right, um, just meters to the minus one. Okay, now we'll go back a little bit. We skipped over this question basically because it was in the wrong place in, in, in the slides. So there's a little question here which you can have a go at. And if you pause the video for a moment while you do that, and then if you've got any problems, we'll go through it in lesson. Okay, so here are some typical um, absorption coefficients for bone and muscle. And this is quite interesting because you can see how it depends on the energy of the x-rays. So up here we've got very, very high energy, very uh, high frequency x-rays, 4 mega electron volts. And that's pretty much the highest we can, we can produce in, in x-ray tubes, going all the way down to about 50 keV. And you can see that as the x-ray energies um, go down, the absorption coefficients for bone and for muscle both increase. Okay, so at low energy x-rays, both bone and muscle is better at absorbing x-rays, i.e. it absorbs low energy x-rays much better than it does high energy x-rays, which is kind of what you expect. Also, you can see that at high energy x-rays, the difference is fairly minimal, whereas at very low energies, bone is very, very good at absorbing x-rays, and therefore you're going to get quite a large difference in contrast here if you, if you use lower energy x-rays. Okay, and you can see from this table how those two absorption coefficients vary with energy of x-rays.